All right, hello. Welcome to day nine. Uh, this is about constructing various graphs, but specifically, this video is just going to be focusing on the box and whisker plot. All right, and uh, the different uh, components of it and what each little area is labeled and what it means and how we find um, that specific value or where we put a given value that we find. All right, so what I want to start with is this top box, all right? Now in this box, it kind of explains um, the elements of a box and whisker plot. Um, so it, had, it shows a uh, five number summary of a set of data. So it's going to have the minimum, the lower quartile, the median, the upper quartile, and the maximum. Now what I want to do is label all those along with some additional uh, pieces. All right, so first I want to do the min and max, because hopefully those are the most self-explanatory. All right, so the min is going to be oops, right there. The min is going to be right here. And the max should be right here. All right, going from left to right, that's usually how always how that will work so we have the minute max um now let's go to the quartiles so we're going to go to the lower quartile first so that lower quartile is going to be right here now if we can see here the lower quartile is also labeled as q1 Okay, now the upper quartile, which is going to be right here. Quartile is labeled Q3. And then that, that red line in the middle. Hopefully we can see it's actually color coded, but that red line in the middle is going to be the the median. All right, sometimes it's labeled Q two, I believe, but uh, we're just gonna just leave it as the median because it has so many names already. Okay, and then the last one that actually is not listed here is this purple line down here. And now this doesn't this doesn't necessarily need to be uh, found, but this is the excuse the band head running. It's going to be the interquartile range, all right. And how we would find this range is just by taking the value that is our Q3 and subtracting it from, or we're taking our Q1 actually and subtracting it from Q3. All right, so in parentheses here, I'll put Q3 minus Q1. And that's for the inner, inner quartile range. Okay, so that is how our box and whisker plot should be labeled. Also, hopefully this is almost self-explanatory on why it is named, what it is named. So it has bo it has a box, or a rectangle rather, and then it has whiskers coming out of the box, representing um, the min and the max data points of our data set, and points that would be considered our, uh, our outliers. Okay? So, um, what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna walk through how we set up a box and whisker plot, and then we're gonna run through a couple examples, specifically uh, two, and then we're going to go in the reverse order. So we're gonna be given a box and whisker plot and uh, having to answer some questions about it. All right, so. 
let's talk about creating a box and whisker plot. Okay, so first step, we're always gonna get a set of data. The first step is always to arrange our data. Oops. Arrange data in ascending order. All right, or just arrange it from least to greatest. Okay, now we don't have to do that, but that's gonna make things a lot easier moving forward. All right, next thing we're gonna do uh, is, and we've done this with a lot of different uh, sets of data, but we're going to identify the median, Q1 and Q3, which again is our lower quartile and our upper quartile. All right, the third, if it isn't already done for you, so I'll put a little asterisk here. If, it, if this isn't done, you gotta make sure that you do this because this is how we're gonna create an accurate box and whisker plot. But it is to draw the number line. Um, I'm gonna say with smallest and largest data points. All right, so if, if our data ranges, like in example one, if our data ranges from five to 53, like it does, don't only, don't draw a, a number line from zero to 100, or don't draw a number line from 10 to 40. I make sure all the data points are included in the number line. Okay. Uh, then step four, should we even zoom in a little bit more? Step four, we are going to draw three vertical lines for the median Q1 and Q3. So we're gonna draw three vertical lines that represent the median, the lower quartile and the upper quartile. And then for step five, we're gonna draw two horizontal lines that will connect Q1 and Q3. All right, so that actually, what that will do then is create our box, which you'll see. And then we have to add our whiskers, which is step six, which is to draw one line from the smallest data point to the left side of the box. And another from the largest point to the right side of the box. I know, I know that was a lot of writing um, for probably the easiest part of creating our box and whisker plot.
All right, so let's now try this out with our first example. All right, so we got this data. All right, so let's try to follow along with these steps. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna arrange my data from, or in ascending order. All right, so I like to cross the data out as I go, just to make sure that I've used them. Uh, now, you might miss a data point, and that's okay. So it's 14, and then 15. And then we got a 22, and then 25, and then 30, and 36, 42, and 53. All right, so now all my data points are crossed off and they're in ascending order, so that is good. All right, next is to identify the, me the median, the lower quartile, and the upper quartile. So the median is just gonna be by and crossing out, now I'm just gonna highlight. Um, highlighting uh, or crossing out values, starting with the lowest and the highest, and the second lowest, second highest, and so on and so forth. Okay, so that's what I do, and we find our median right there, our median is 22, so I'm gonna draw that line right about there. That should be our median. Now within our bottom half and upper half of the other data points, we're gonna find the uh, lower, quartile, or lower quartile, excuse me, and upper quartile. Now that's just finding the median of this lower set and the upper set, respectfully. All right, so same thing. So we're gonna cross that out, cross that out, cross that out, cross that out. So our Q1 is going to be 12. And our upper quartile is going to be right there, which is 36. Okay, so I kind of did steps two and three. Oh, well actually, hold on, excuse me. Step three is already done for us because I already have the number line here, but I already did steps two and four for us. Okay, now we're gonna jump to step five, which is drawing a, or drawing two, excuse me, horizontal lines to connect our Q1 and Q3. So there we have created our box. And then the last step, which is Q, uh, which is step six, is to draw two lines. So we're starting at the lowest point, which is five, and going to the left side of our box. And then we're starting at our highest point, which is 53. And we're going to the right side of the box. And there we've created our box and whisker plot. All right, <clears throat> so hopefully uh, that makes sense. And we're gonna be able to see one more example here in a second. All right, so if we pull up notes here. Oops. Um, let's go right about there. All right, so again, we, we know from the previous example, we can skip step three, right? Because the number line is already made for us. So we're gonna go to step one, which is to write our data in ascending order. So our lowest point is gonna be three. Then we have two sevens, then an eight, and then a nine, then a 12 and a 14. Okay, um, next is to identify the median and the upper and lower quartile. 
So we're gonna do that, cross off these. So there's our median right there. Boom, it's eight. I'm gonna draw a vertical line right there. And then we're going to use the lower and upper half to find our Q1 and Q3. So I'm just gonna do both of those simultaneously. So our Q1 should be seven and our Q3 should be 12. All right, and then going to step, will that be four? Or no, I'm sorry. Step four was making the vertical lines. Step five is to draw the horizontal lines. All right, so that is our box. And then we have to make our whisker, or whiskers, excuse me, which is going to the lowest point, which is at three, bam, and then 14, bam. All right, so I know it's kind of shaky. Hopefully your lines are a little bit better, but that should be our box and whisker plot for that second example, okay? Now, if we go not necessarily in the reverse order, like I said earlier, but if we go the opposite direction where we now have, oops, let me, there we go. If we are given a box and whisker plot and we, are af we have to identify some values or some uh, key pieces of it, now we should be able to do that. Okay, so we were given uh, this box and whisk whisker plot representing some data from a sixth grade math test that some students took. All right, so going off of the general example that we saw at the very beginning of this video and then these two examples, we should be able to identify uh, all of these pieces below. Okay, so our Q1, remember our Q1 should be the leftmost vertical line. So that's gonna be right here. Uh, now, again, this number line isn't exact. Uh, I said that's about 78. Hopefully we agree with that. Um, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna jump down to our Q3, which should be right here. I said that's about 93 for Q3 or the upper quartile. Uh, the median is straight on with 85, so hopefully that one uh, doesn't need to be questioned too much. And then the min and max should be down, well, the min should be down here at about 68 or 69. And then the max should be up here, I said that's about 98. Now remember the interquartile range, I didn't, I didn't put range in there, but the interquartile range should be, remember, put in parentheses, but it should be Q3 minus Q1. So we should take our Q3, which is about 93 minus Q1, 78, and that should give us 15. All right, so 15. And again, there aren't units here, so we're not putting units here. Uh, we're not assigning units to these values that we're finding. Um, but those should be our answers, okay? And just like any other way of interpreting data, um, we should be able to, uh, use this to hopefully find some accurate answers and be able to, um, use that, use whatever data we're given, um, moving forward. All right. So, uh, if we have any questions and there should be some practice with the lesson today, uh, it's not necessarily all on box and whisker plots, but when that does come up on the practice or on the homework, uh, hopefully we should be able to work through those problems. And if you have any questions, again, please do not hesitate to ask your teacher. All right. I uh, hope this made sense. Have a great day.